Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video game about a base in space, a book about a hungry stick dog, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing, Ali Razakhan. Ali is a host, writer, and motivational speaker from Pakistan. Wow, I am beyond thrilled to be here. Well, you're welcome. And today, we're going to start off with a video of the week, and this is going to be a battle. And now it's time for the video game of the week. And today's video game is Space Base Tycoon. This game is made by the gang Stockholm. Because it is on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free! Yay! Yes. So, first off, I get into the game, and you are presented with a button, and you go on top of it, and a building called a Headquarters appears. Then more of those buttons pop up, and then you have to earn money to push them, really. Well, each one builds more, like, buildings or upgrades, like troopers or flying guys, or, like, upgrades to weapons. So, when you build, wow. like, a barracks... They will, like, start to, like, run towards the middle of the map for some reason. I mean, it's, like, part of the AI. So, yeah. So, if you only your men are in the middle, then you are the king of the hill. And you are able to get double the money. So, hold that point and upgrade your men and weapons. Wow, that seems and sounds interesting. <laughs> because it is. And I give Space Base Tycoon 12 out of 10 stars because you can enjoy destroying your friends with droids, guns, and running around the maps with guns and other robots and cars. Also, you can use oh. special items that you can use to get kills or tags, whatever. Wow. The Tiberius Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Airboat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an airboat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. And now it's time for the book of the week. Stick Dog Wants a Hot Dog. Another good story, but with bad drawings. Well, this book is written by Tob Watson. Let me read the back of the book. In fact, Allie, would you like to do the honors? Yes, sure. In the second book, Stick Dog is at it again. And he's hungrier than ever before. He and his four friends, Poo Poo, Mutt, Strips, and Karen, must execute a master plan to steal some hot dogs. But the closer they get to the hot dog vendor, the more obstacles they meet. Ooh. So in the first story, Stick Dog got cheeseburgers. But this time, they're trying to get hot dogs. So they found a hot dog stand, but they wanted to steal them right away. They wanted to do it like spies with stealth. Well, then they find others trying to steal it as well. Raccoons! So... And someone also kidnapped Karen on the way there, which is crazy. And now they have to go find her before they get their hot dogs, and they're very hungry now. So, what will they do? 
Oh, and the plans for hot dog snatching? Well, they got. Well, we are gonna have to read the book. Really, you know. Yeah. Well, I give Stick Dog What's a Hot Dog another good story with bad drawings. Seven out of ten stars because I really liked the story and it was so good. And I will be sure to go and read the other books. I enjoyed the adventure even oh. though I am sure that there was an easier way to get a hot dog. Oh, wow. See, David Smith. Law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithlaw.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for an interview of an interesting person. Today's this is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Ali Raza Khan. So wow. First off, so first off is well, Ali is 14 years old, a show host, does interviews, a writer, and a motivational speaker, and he lives in Pakistan, which is a far long way. Yeah. Okay, so first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I just love the energy, your positivity. And I wonder, I have a question for you, indeed. I want to ask you, where does this energy, where does this positivity, where this vibes come to you from? I don't have that energy. It comes from, it comes from me being excited from school. Okay, so, so first off, you live very far away. Can you give my listeners an idea where of where Pakistan is? Okay, Pakistan is in Asia. Pakistan uh, has neighboring countries such as India, China, and you know Pakistani people are really congenial. And if you want to come to Pakistan, I would really suggest you to visit Kashmir. It's so beautiful and you will enjoy your vacations if you come there in your vacations and you'll have lots of fun. I'll tell my mom. Sweet. Okay, so you are the host of your own show called The AK Show. Well, what gets you interested in starting your own show? Mm, nothing more than just talking. I was born talkative. I love talking to people. I love knowing more about their cultures, their diversity, and things like that excite me so much. And that's exactly why I started my own podcast, and I'm loving it. Yeah. So, how long have you been doing this? Hmm, I've been doing this from now for more than two years, and it's been a wonderful experience. My life has transformed completely. Well, what's your show all about? Hmm. My show is all about those people who have done something distinctive, who are doing something unique in their realms, and those people who want to help and give back to the world. I enjoy. I invite business visionaries, celebrities, uh, political personalities, and so many other people from different fields. Hmm. Okay, so you seem to talk about a lot of things. Now, what was that one thing that you want to have fixed in pa Pakistan? Well, what was that hmm. one subject that you think that made the most difference? Yeah, very well. Very good question, Tiberius. Thank you for that. Uh, I live in Pakistan, and there are actually, well, actually a lot of things that I want to change, but if I have to choose specifically, that would be poverty. And education, of course, illiteracy, because both of these things have are interrelated to each other. Uh, once we illiterate our people, we provide quality education, then we can sort of bring in hope and we can eradicate poverty. And I think that'll make a huge difference. Okay. So I see that you got a lot of awards from the work that you are doing. Well, which award are you most proud of? Hmm. Actually, I'm proud of all my awards. Um, I am so proud, and I've always been blessed. You know what I mean? Um, one of the uh, 
awards that I'm really, really proud of is my Asian International Excellence Awards nomination. I haven't got that award yet, but you know, it's so larger than life. I just got an international nomination because a few months ago, I was just getting nominations and awards nationally. But when I get nominated for an international award, I was so filled with excitement and I was jumping and I celebrated. So yeah, that means a lot for me. Okay. So it says in your bio that you want to get into politics. Well, what would you do if you were in charge? Hmm. First of all, I would eradicate poverty, as I said in the beginning. I would um, sort of, you know, bring in development by introducing the modern technology so that, you know, our country can evolve and develop as a nation. And I think communication and correspondence is a very good way to do that. And I'd really um, support uh, the expansion of education, primary, secondary, and low, higher secondary, because I think education, I firmly believe in the power of education and the change that it can bring in. Okay, so how long do you think it would take to accomplish these goals? Hmm. First of all, it's not a one man's job. Uh, it will it will require a lot of people to work effectively and collectively in a unanimous manner in order to you know um, uh, do something bigger because this is this might take centuries because this is such a big vision that I have. Uh, it may seem a bit difficult, but of course it's not impossible. The word impossible it says, itself says I am possible. So. If we unite together, all of us Pakistanis uh, together, work unanimously, then we can definitely bring a change and no one can stop us. Okay. So what is the best part about running your own radio show? About on your show? Well, no, how about your own talk show? Yeah, it's just so amazing. I love talking to people, as I told you. And uh, when I meet different people, I know more about their culture, their ethnicities. Um, and I firmly believe that we all may have different cultures and backgrounds. But at the end of the day, look, we are all breathing the same air. And we are living in this globalized world. So there shouldn't be any discrimination based on caste, creed, religion, faith, and any prejudice or any apathy. So I want to work on these things, and that's exactly what I bet why I aspire to become a political leader. Because what I want to do is only possible through politics and authority. Okay. So what is the craziest situation that you have run into while doing your show? Hmm. There are a lot of things, but I once had someone um, very jubilant and cheerful. I usually have to do like serious show on serious topic, rarely serious topic. But that person actually had so much humor. He was full of humor and he shared a lot of good jokes. And I love that part. And that really excited me that day. Okay. So what is the hardest part about writing your talk show? Uh, I think there isn't one uh, because um, talk show and, you know, talking to people is like my passion. So it's never something difficult when you have passion for something. It's never too difficult. It's always easy peasy. And that's exactly what I tell to everyone. If you want to achieve something, you've got to have full interest. Or either you can leave it or try out something else if you, are, you don't have that interest. Okay. So fascination is always very important. Okay, so as you can tell, I run a show as well. So don't you have to like write your own scripts? Because I don't really like to do that part. Hmm. I mostly love to do random shows, rap, you know, random reactions. I don't really prepare a script because I think the more spontaneous it is, the better it is and the more interesting the show gets. Who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? Wow, what a lovely question. Thank you so much for that. Since my mother is very close to me, she has always been like my backbone. I cannot even think about doing anything without her consent. So yes, my mother has always inspired me to dream bigger and to have wild, wild dreams. And she, every single day, she gives me incentives to keep on doing what I'm doing and to follow my passions. So yeah, my mom. Okay. So it says here that you are a motivational speaker as well as a writer. So which of those jobs is harder? 
Um, nothing. Because I think I was born a speaker. I was born an international speaker. And yeah, I used to be very introvert. I was a very shy, unsociable kind of a person. Uh, one day, um, I had to, you know, give a speech in front of almost a thousand people. And oh my God, it was such an embarrassing moment. I failed miserably. I forgot everything that I prepared. From that point forward, I decided that I'm going to work on myself, on my communication skills, and I am going to be an international speaker. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. Huh. So since you do so many cool jobs, do you find it hard to juggle them all? Hmm, not really. No. Okay. So... How do you come up with your subjects that you want to write or speak about? Do you have like a team that helps you? Um, no, not yet. Uh, but my parents do help me brainstorm ideas and find out different topics and subjects to work on. Um, I actually go through Twitter whenever I have to, you know, talk about something trendy, something that's, uh, you know, talk of the town, uh, because I think it's very important. And, uh, yeah, that's how I uh, sort of uh, collect, accumulate ideas and brainstorm them. Yeah. Okay. So, kind of run me through. What kind of tasks does a talk show host have to do every day? Hmm. I think uh, that person, I firmly believe in the power of practicing. And it is rightly said that practice makes a man perfect. Not just for talk show hosts, but for any any other person who, in any realm, in any field, he or she must practice every single day. If you are a doctor, it's important that you, if you are a surgeon doctor, you do surgeries, it's important that you keep in practice. And the same goes for talk show hosts. If you are a talk show host, you should read books every single day. You should practice. You should talk to as much people as you possibly can. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Okay, so... Okay, so, if you could think of one thing that would make your job easier, what would it be? Hmm, I think um, I do need a team because I do have lots of ideas for future. I do have lots of uh, plans for my talk show and I want to upgrade the quality and, of course, the whole setup. And I'm truly inspired and I truly like that setup that you have, Tadbury. You're so lucky. So I want to have a team that can work with me so that, you know, I can do my job effectively and easily. Nice. Well, what advice would you give my listeners if they wanted to grow up and be a talk show host slash motivational speaker? Hmm, that's a very good question. If anyone wants to pursue a career as a talk show host, he it's very, very important that he or she has a full, uh, you know, interest because if they, he or she doesn't have any interest, then it's it's going to be horrible. They will fail miserably. So it's important, it, indeed, very, very important and consequential that they are interested in talk show. And if that's their passion, they just need to believe in themselves, practice, work on their self-development. And, yeah, that's all they have to do if you, that's their passion. Okay. That's the sort of advice I'd like to give it give to everyone who wants to pursue a career in talk show. Okay. Well, if you could go back five years and tell yourself something, what would it be? I would advise myself and tell myself to be more tolerant, open, and I should have the desire to learn more every single day. That's what I would tell myself five years back. Okay. Well, so to remind my guests that you are very far away. In the country of Pakistan, how do you think it differs from the United States? Um, there's actually a lot of difference. Uh, there's social, political, and of course, economical difference. Um, and of course, the United States is far more evolved than Pakistan is. Um, I think there's a lot of cultural difference as well. Uh, you know, we, we may have different accents. We may wear different clothes. We may worship something else. But at the end of the day, it's very, very important that we realize that we are all breathing the same air. We are all living in this globalized world. So I think um, the biggest difference that there is is uh, the culture. That's it. Nothing more. Okay. Well, what is the best part about living in Pakistan? 
everything. I mean, the food here it's so tasty, and I really suggest Tiberius. Whenever you come to Asia, to any Asian countries, do visit Pakistan. I'll take you outside to Food Street, and the pasta here it's super spicy and super tasty. If you want it, if you are into spicy things, if you like spicy food, then pasta, street food pasta, is We very famous like here in Pakistan. We don't like spicy food. Yeah, we're not like a spicy family, but do you guys have like steak? <laughs> yeah, I'd really suggest you to come here, and I'd take I'll take you outside for dinner or lunch. Yeah. Well, what's the hardest part about Pakistan? Hmm. I think it's there's nothing really hard about living in Pakistan. The people here are very hospitable. Uh, we are. We do have diversity. We do have cultural diversity, different languages, different provinces, different regions.、Uh, but we are so connected, and we are so congenial and hospitable when it comes to helping each other, and when it comes to helping in our worst of situations. And we are always there, be it women, be it men. We're always ready to help. So there's not really anything hard about Pakistan. Okay. Well, what do you think is the most important issue that you think needs attention now in your country? It has to be education, and、um, and not just、uh, an ordinary education, but quality education, especially for women and girls, because most of the girls in Pakistan are deprived of their basic right to education, which is horrible. So I want to advocate, and I want to. Uh, you know, raise this awareness to educate girls because they are the future of the country. They will shape the nation. Okay. So, what do you think is something that the United States needs to work on? Like, what do you think that we I, need to work on? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you so much for asking. I think something that the United States needs to work on is. Because I know that harassment happens everywhere. It happens in Pakistan. It happens all over the world. If there's anything that your nation needs to change, is eradicate harassment, and it can be any kind of harassment.、It、can be sexual. It can be physical. It can be anything. But it has to be solved. It has to be eliminated. Well, yeah. How do you think that they could accomplish that, or us, really? Uh, by making such rules and regulations that can govern,、uh, you know, that there should be strict laws for people for harassment for for those of the people who commit such crimes, and this is against humanity. I mean, harassment is not is awful. It's atrocious.、Um, so some of the ways they can do that is by reaching out to the local authorities and making laws and regulations that can govern. Uh, the desired results and eliminates、um, harassment. Yeah, about that. I think we already tried that, but they just wouldn't listen.、And、yeah, but I think there needs、them? to be there. There is need a need to make strict laws, like complete execution laws should be there for one who commits such crime. Yeah, it's it's a serious crime. Okay, well, what's the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change as a person? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. When I was around ten years of age, I was, as I told you, very unsociable. I was very, you know, introvert kind of a person. So, if that was probably the mistake I used to make, I was not open to ideas. I was a very intolerant,、uh, you know, bossy kind of a person. But now I have learned to be more humble、um, and, you know, kind. And I think that's the biggest mistake I made. I was not open to ideas. I was intolerant. Okay. Well, so when you're not working as like a talk show host and other things, I'm guessing, what do you do for fun? Hmm. I am a bibliomaniac. I have this extreme love for books. I read, you know, a lot of books. And one of my favorite books is The Forty Rules of Love by Leif Shafak. So books, reading books, is my all-time favorite hobby. Along with that, I love Hollywood. I love English movies. I've seen Jurassic Park. I've I've seen Harry Potter, and I've read the books as well. So that's what I do: mostly reading and watching movies for fun. Well, thanks for answering one of our questions. And do you play video games? And if you do, what is your favorite one? Hmm. To be honest, 
Tiberius, I don't play video games at all. I don't know. They don't interest me anymore. Not even I used on to your, be... Not even, like, on your phone if you have one? No, because I have a lot of other things to do. And I true. just don't want to... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I just don't want to waste my time. I just want to utilize my time for the greater cause, which is of spreading the message of love, peace, kindness, and harmony all across the globe. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I must not waste my time. Okay. 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 Now can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid show, but that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on. You can tell me. Oh. Tiberius, you seems to be a very naughty boy. <laughs> that's okay. I need to think first if that's inappropriate to tell. Hmm, what could it be? What it could be? Hmm, I just have to circulate my ideas, my everything, my memory. We can take a break if you I want. I think I don't have such story. Oh my god, I don't have any. Yeah. Not even like something embarrassing. Yes, I told you about that first time when I had to give a speech. Yeah, I failed miserably. True. Everybody was laughing at me, and I was awkwardly embarrassed. So, yeah, that was a very... And you know, wow. that's the fun part. When I was preparing for it, everyone around me, my teachers, my parents, my colleagues, my friends, everyone was sure that I was, I'm going to do an incredible job. But, you know, I did not manage to reach, up, reach out to the expectations, and I was so embarrassed. And you're like, wait... What did I write? <laughs> and then they just like, whoop, dead. Okay, so was there anything I should think my listeners should know about you? Um, I am very much of a serious person. Um, and that's exactly what I want to see in my life partner. He, she should be very um, well-spoken. And of course, uh, Good looking. I, I don't really believe in looks. Uh, speaking skills and communication is more valuable in my insights, but she should be very good looking. She should be well spoken, and that's all I need in my life partner. So that's sort of a knowledge that one can know about me, about my personification. Okay. Well, do you have like a website or Facebook for my listeners to want to follow you? Of course, yes. And indeed, my Facebook profile is Ali Reza Khan. And you can go there. You will have lots of content to see and lots of informative topics that I have upload every single day. And you'll get knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. Great. Well, what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Hmm. Probably, what's the color of my toothbrush? Well, what is it? <laughs> it's red. <laughs> Why? No, there's no particular reason to it. It just actually my mom goes for grocery. So she's the one who brings, you know, toothbrushes and toothpaste. So I don't know. I don't have any reason to have a So you don't have any reason, but maybe um, your mom might. But <laughs> Yeah. It might be a part two. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe like a part two. Thank you, Allie, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for math corners? Yes, I will. Yes, I love math. Do you like math? No, I hate it totally. I, you know, I am a mediocre person when it comes to math. I hate it. Sorry. I'm more into sociology and science. Ah. <laughs> Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact White House Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Well, thank you, Ali, for helping me with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about multiplying positive and negative numbers. Okay. Hi, right? 
So I've been doing my school math questions and they have like an exercise about multiplying positive and negative numbers. Now this is very easy. So we just will jump it right into it. So if you were like multiplying numbers, well if they both have the same sign, either positive or negative, the result will be positive. If you are multiplying the numbers, they, if they both have different signs, one's positive, the other is negative, then the result will be negative. Now, if you want to know something cool, this trick also works on division. So if you are dividing positive and negative numbers, you can use the same trick to always know the sign of the result. So it's kind of just like, um, let's say, 34 divided by negative 2. It's negative 16 because, I mean, there's only two numbers. One's positive and one's negative. And just like if we use like the multiplying thing, the answer would be negative because there's only one negative in the problem. So it's the same thing with division. And so it would be negative 16 because there's, because, because there's only one negative in the equation. If that makes sense. Well, this yeah. is like also like a great way to check your work when you're doing speed math. Oh yeah, so Allie, do you now know all about how to multiply positive and negative numbers? Mm, not really, but because I hate math, what I've really understood is you are a very good student when it comes to math. That's all I get. Yeah, but I I'm just really in like regular in fifth grade for ELA and social studies and science. <laughs> Yes, I am someone, listen, Tiberius, I am someone who would get 100 out of 100 in other subjects, be it, be it sociology, be it science, biology, be it any English, I get 100 out of 100. But when it comes to maths, I'm always on average. But thank you <laughs> so much, Ali, for your yeah. help in the math corners. Yeah, it was truly a pleasure being here. The Tiberius Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the heart of the line. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of the line, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about nobility. For me, I think nobility is remembering that we are God's special possessions and acting in a noble way, showing courage and honor. The qualities of nobility are goodness, virtue, honor, generosity, and selflessness. Well, I used nobility this week with my new bracelet making kit. Well, my mom got me this cool bracelet, bracelet kit where I can make lots of cool friendship bracelets for my friends at school. Myself, Autumn, Cooper, and Annabella have been having fun making these. Well, this week, I brought my kit into school, and I shared it with my friends so that they could use all the cool colors that I have. This was selflessness and generosity. So, Allie, did you see or use nobility to all this week? Yes, indeed, I do that every single day. I, in my terms, nobility means giving back to the world. You may agree and you may not agree, but that's what I, that's how I perceive it. So I sort of, you know, give something to those who are deprived, to those who don't have all those privileges that we have. And giving back to the community, uh, you know, makes you a positive person. And whatever the qualities you told about generosity, kindness, leadership, um, dedication, these are all qualities that a leader requires. So, yeah, in order to be a good leader, we need to be able to listen to others, listen to others' opinions, and be open to ideas, be tolerant. And, of course, we should have a desire to learn always, like a lifelong learning approach. So, for me, nobility is giving back to the world and being happy and positive. Okay. Well, we should always try to be lying strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Mm, I think uh, we should every single day try to be try to have gratitude because gratitude is very very important 
And of course, gratitude comes from peace of mind and peace of mind comes from your job or whatever the activities you are doing. So it's very important that whatever you do, you do it with all your might, you accept it and you be happy doing it. And that's what I think it's all about. Hey, that's our show, folks. I want to thank the amazing for being on my show. Thank you so very much. It was truly a pleasure. I'm so honored. Well, you're welcome. And it's been so much fun talking with you today. And I hope in the future that we get to see lots of our episodes of your show. Yeah, sure. You can reach me out on Facebook. My fa Facebook username is Ali Riza Khan. You can also reach me out on Instagram if you want. My Instagram handle is Ali Rosa 72 And yeah, you can also email me at aliroz.cha at the rate gmail.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn as Ali Rosa 124 Okay. So, also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us Yo. next week on The Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius! Bye! Ooh, wow! <laughs>